Hi, my name is Chris Winfrey, and we will be learning about floor and ceiling functions. The floor function assigns x the largest integer that is less than x. So, for example, the floor function of 2.5 is equal to 2, and the floor function of 1.245 is equal to 0. The ceiling function is the opposite of the floor function. It assigns x the smallest integer that is greater than x. So, for example, the ceiling function of 5.6 is equal to 6, and the ceiling function of 1.245 is equal to 1. Floor functions and ceiling functions have useful properties. The floor function of x is equal to n if and only if n is less than or equal to x and n plus 1 is greater than x. The ceiling function of x is equal to n if and only if n minus 1 is less than x and n is greater than or equal to x. Likewise, the floor function is equal to n. The floor function of x is equal to n if and only if x minus 1 is less than n and x is greater than or equal to n. The ceiling function of x is equal to n if and only if x is less than n and if x plus 1 is greater than n. From those properties, we can conclude that x minus 1 is less than the floor function of x, which is less than or equal to x, and the ceiling function is greater or equal to x, and x plus 1 is greater than the, floor, than the ceiling function of x. The floor function of negative x is equal to the negative of the ceiling function of x, and the negative, or the ceiling function of negative x is equal to the negative of the floor function of x. The floor function of the quantity x plus n is equal to the floor function of x plus n, if n is an integer. Likewise, the ceiling function of the quantity x plus n is equal to the ceiling function of x plus n. All right, now I'll show you some graphs of floor functions. This function here is y equals x, your traditional function, but as you can see, it is no longer just a continuous line. It has these steps here. And this is because whenever the value is in between an integer, it must fall down to the nearest integer. So these values between 1 and 2 must all be 1. Uh, the, ceiling function fun the ceiling function works in much the same way, except that they all have to go up. So everything between 5 and 6 should go up to 6, which this graph shows. Now we have the function floor of 2 of x. times the ceiling of x half. These seem to uh, step up about at every half, which would make sense given this term. But we have this single isolated dot here. We should look at and examine that really quickly. If x is between 1.5 and 2, 2x is between 3 and 4, so that will always fall down because of the floor function here to 3. x half of something between 1.5 and 2 will always be between 0 0.75 and 1 which rises up to 1. Since that rises up to 1 we will have 3 times 1 equals 3 which is this value. Now if we look at 2 itself, 2 itself 
2 times x would equal 4 when x equals 2 and x over 2 equals 1 when x equals 2 so 4 times 1 equals 4 so that is correct and then if we assume we go just any amount past 2 so between 2 and 2.5 2x is going to be between 4 and 5, which goes down to 4, as we already know, because of the floor function there. The ceiling portion of this function x is between 2 and 2.5, x over 2 will then be between 1 and 0 0.25. And if it's between 1 and 0 0.25, this must rise to 2 because it's a ceiling function and it goes to the nearest integer. And 2 times 4 equals 8, which happens directly after the point. Is another interesting ceiling function. It seems that it merely just the floor of x minus one half plus one half, and then we take the ceiling of this entire thing. If we look at this graph closely, it seems to take the standard y equals x step function and slide it over a half. As we can see by how it's climbing in steps of one. But instead of at the normal integer values, it goes up at the halves because of these halves that we've used to modulate the function. Here are some basic examples of floor and ceiling functions. The floor of one half was zero. The floor of negative one half would be negative one. The floor of 3.1 is 3 and the floor of 7 because it is an integer is just 7. The ceiling of 1 half is 1, the ceiling of negative 1 half is 0, the ceiling of 3.1 is 4 and because 7 is an integer the ceiling of it is just 7. Um, here's a harder example, let s equal the set of negative 1, 0, 2, 4, and 7. Find f of s if a f of x is the ceiling of x over 5. So f of s will equal the set of the ceiling of each individual term. Alright, and now we simplify that and we get f of s is the set of 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, which simplifies to the set of 0, 1, and 2. If f of x is the floor of x squared plus 1 over 3, we do the same thing. Take the individual uh, outcomes of each term in the set. That would be, and now we simplify yet again, and we get the set 0, 0, 1, 5, 16. If you want to write it in simplest form, it's the set 0, 1, 5, 16. Going the other way, if we let f of x equal x squared over 3, find f of s if s is the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We do the same thing and just take the, plug those numbers into the uh, equation and we get, and then we simplify and 8. If S is the set of 
2, 6, 10, and 14. And if we simplify that, we get f of s equals the set of 1, 12, 33, and 65. All right, here's a proof using floor and ceiling functions. Uh, we need to prove or disprove that the floor of the square root of the ceiling of x is equal to the floor of the square root of x for all positive real numbers x. Here, I have a hunch that it's not equal, so we're going to try and disprove it. And for an example, we're going to use x equals 3.9. On the left side, we get the floor of the square root of the ceiling of x, which is the floor of the square root of the ceiling of 3.9, which is the floor of the square root of 4, which is just 2. On the right hand side, we get the floor of the square root of x, which is the floor of the square root of 3.9. And this is the floor of 1.97, which is 1. 2 does not equal 1. Therefore, the floor of the square root of the ceiling of x does not equal the floor of the square root of x.